What's good guys? We're back at it again with another video. As you see from the title today, we have part three of our three-part series, my AAU circuit story. If you guys remember, part one was about actually getting on the circuit, getting on these shoe teams. Yesterday, part two was about playing on the circuit, my experiences, things that I saw, things that I learned. Today, part three is going to be about that period from that June summer league game up until, you know, the first time I stepped foot on a college campus, which was June of 2017. I know you guys have been waiting for this, so we just going to jump right into it. So if you guys remember, this was, you know, the summer going into my senior year. This is a June summer league game um, coming off of getting my first offer. I had a lot of mid-major offers, one high major offer, but I had like five or six high major schools that were going to come see me in July and was going to decide if they wanted to pull that trigger. I was really excited because remember I told you guys I was that fringe mid-major, you know, kind of high major player. Every player in the state ranked above me went high major. Every other starter on my AAU team went high major. So that's what I'm thinking. I need to produce in July so I can get that high major offer finally. Obviously, we go to our June summer league game. Layup lines, like I said, I got the ball. I'm going for a layup. I'm coming to the game early. I'm feeling pretty good. Shoot the layup, come down, land on my teammate's foot, pop. After I heard the pop for the first time, initially, I didn't feel anything. So I thought I was okay. And I start running, you know, towards the rebounding line. And all of a sudden, like my foot is on fire, like on fire. But I do, I'm never a quitter. I'm never a quitter. And in my head, I remember like, I was still thinking like, nah, like you, you don't have time to be hurt. You have to play next month in July to get the rest of your high major offers that you want so badly. I end up just going on the side court and I'm running up and down like with my foot on fire because in my head it was like, bro, you do not have time to get hurt. Like you do not have time for any of this. And I was not trying to quit. So I was trying to push it to play, but my foot is on fire. And at a certain point it was like, all right, B, like you can barely walk now. You probably made it worse by doing all this running. After I leave the gym, we go straight to the hospital, straight to the hospital. I think I'm there for maybe two, three hours. I get the x-ray, this, this, and that. Like, and I'm still in my uniform. So I'm laying in the hospital, you know, with my uniform on for hours afterwards, get the x-ray. Like I said, doctor comes back in the room. You know, he asks me like the general questions, things like that. And then he flips the screen and he shows me, if you guys want to see any of the pictures of my actual injury, go check out my, you know, my injury video that's actually on the channel. Flips the screen, shows me and my parents. He's like, okay, you have, you know, you have a break in your fifth metatarsal. So what your fifth metatarsal is, you know, like on your hand, your fifth is your outside bone on your foot. So with my right foot, my outside bone on the outside of my right foot, that's what I broke. Not to mention that he also says the fifth metatarsal is also one of the points on the body that gets the least amount of blood flow. So in my head, I'm like, all right, so I don't know like what you're telling me. You're telling me I, I broke it and it doesn't have good blood flow. So the recovery time is actually pretty long. The doctor there recommended us to an orthopedist who had like a track record of working with athletes before. So we go to him. And for this part of the story, for all my athletes, it doesn't even have to be basketball. If you're watching this when dealing with injuries, make sure you're paying attention to what I'm saying in terms of, you know, vetting the doctor that you're going to initially and, you know, making sure he really understands what he's talking about. We go to this orthopedist, you know, of course, he says the same thing. I broke my fifth metatarsal. But what he says is, even though the first doctor, you know, said that the blood flow to that area is bad, this orthopedist tells me and my family, if we just put him in a boot, and he just doesn't do anything for the next couple months, he should be ready for the first game of his senior year, which is on November 20th. There's a reason why I will never forget that date, right? That's what he tells me and my family, the orthopedist that we were recommended. Because, you know, he was recommended and he had, you know, an athletic track record, me and my family, we just went with what he said. We're like, okay, so I don't need surgery. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna immobilize my foot, put it in a boot. Obviously, I couldn't play in the July period. No basketball at all. From around the end of June up until maybe about September, October, I'm in a boot, right? So what that means is no basketball, no nothing. This is where we're going to talk about, you know, the impact that that actually had on my recruiting because I couldn't play in July. And remember what I said, I had all these high major schools coming to see me. What I found out was that the mid-major schools, the schools that had already made me a priority, that extended offers to me, they didn't care about the injury. They didn't care that I broke my foot. They were still calling me texting me every day. They still wanted to get me out on visits. So I took some mid-major visits during that time where I couldn't play at all. But the high major schools, the high majors, remember that I said wanted to come see me play in July. All of a sudden, you know, I'm not getting those calls anymore. 
I'm not getting those text messages. And this is when I started to realize like, okay, you really need to make sure you're going where you're needed, not wanted. At the mid-major level, I was needed. They needed me on the roster. They didn't care if I got hurt. They needed me there, so they wanted to let me know that. At the high major level, they didn't need me. They wanted me. Yeah, you know, if I perform well in July, we'll throw him an offer. You know, he might play a little bit. He won't be a priority, a starter, but we'll just have him on the roster, right? So when I got hurt, what happened? Oh, you know, we don't we don't even need to call him, text him anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, they just weren't even worried about me. It's like I was a number. In fact, there was this one specific instance that kind of let me know that, okay, at the high major level, for me specifically, I was probably just going to be a number among the masses, while at the mid-major level, I was going to be a priority recruit, be able to play big minutes early on. I don't remember where I was. I get a phone call. Unknown number, never seen the number before, don't know the area code or anything. I'm like, who is this? Answer the phone. Hey, Brian, it's Coach So-and-So from the University of Cincinnati. And in my head, I'm like, Cincinnati? I, I don't remember them coming to any of my games. Like, I don't remember any of that, right? He tells me, he's like, yeah, you know, we've been checking up on you and we just wanted to call and let you know that, you know, you have a spot here if you want it. This is exactly what he said. I'm going to take you through this conversation verbatim. He goes, yeah, you know, we, you know, we got a spot here if you want it. And at the time, I understood the whole half offer versus a real offer thing. So I said, uh, are you are you guys offering me a full scholarship? This is what I said on the phone. I asked him, I'm like, yeah, so um, are you guys offering me a full scholarship? He kind of hesitated and he's like, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, at the time, I'm like, yeah, coach, you know, I really appreciate it. You know, that means a lot to me, da, 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 da. I hang up the phone, right? But in my head, I'm thinking, bro, I remember our games. I do not remember Cincinnati seeing me play not one time. So at that point, I just started to realize, like, this really is a business. What Cincinnati just did was they had a big man that they wanted, a recruit that they wanted. They didn't get him. He obviously committed somewhere else. So they had an open roster spot. So they started looking around and probably called a couple people like, yeah, you know what? What big man do you think is good enough for our level that can fill a roster spot? So they just called me out of the blue without seeing me actively recruiting me and just said, yeah, you know, you have a spot here not we need you here da, da 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 he literally said no we have a spot for you honestly for me after that situation it kind of put me off towards high majors i'm like you know what i'm not going high major like y'all didn't want me anyway y'all just wanted to wait until july to see if i was kind of good enough to play at your level y'all don't need me y'all just want me kind of want me not even for real for real want me so i was off a of high major so what happened was late august i ended up committing to florida gulf coast university and this was a week after my official visit. The reason I committed so fast, and I've never said this publicly, it was a bunch of different things. You got to think about it. I'm just coming off my injury. I'm still in the boot. I can't play yet, right? I just have the high majors are basically letting me know we don't need you. If you're there and available, we would take you, but we don't need you, right? So I'm kind of mad about that. High majors don't want me. Okay, you know, I'm going mid-major then. Like, that's what I'm doing. I go to Go Coast, shout out Coach Dooley, and he shows me player by player who's leaving who's coming in, puts it on a whiteboard and shows me this is the opportunity you're going to have to earn minutes. Notice what I'm saying. This is the opportunity you're going to have to earn minutes. They're not going to be given to you. None of that. You actually have to come in and beat somebody out of a spot. And he also just let me know, along with the whole coaching staff, how much they needed me in their program. There's one more thing that added into that. You know, this was smart as a coach to do this, right? I'm on my visit and there's a big from Georgia who's going to take a visit to Gulf Coast the week after my official, right? But the assistant coach from Gulf Coast is telling me like, yeah, you know, you know, he's going to visit. I think he really likes us. He might commit on his visit, right? He might. He did that on purpose, obviously. But as a kid, I'm like, him, I'm better than him. So he's not about to take my spot. This was added into it, obviously. So all of that together contributed towards me committing so early in August. There were still maybe one or two high majors that was kind of in my phone saying, Oh yeah, you know, we'll come check you out when you're healthy in the fall. But I was like, I'm not waiting on y'all. No, I'm not a priority. I'm going to commit. Part of the reason why I say my story is crazy because I thank God I committed in late August. After I committed, of course, the fanfare, everything, congratulations. I'm doing a lot of rehab, trying to get back in shape to get ready for my first game of my senior year, which is what, remember, that's what the orthopedist said I would be ready. Like that's when he said I would be ready by my first game of my senior year. 
I will not lie. I started, you know, playing a little bit earlier than I should, but that's what any athlete does that actually wants to get back on the court. November 20th comes around and we're playing Sprayberry, a rival for Kel. Kind of nervous, but I'm kind of feeling good. You know, I've actually put on some weight. So before I got hurt, I was probably 230 something. By the first game of my senior year, I'm like 250, right? So I'm bigger. It's it's a little bit of fat in there, obviously, because I'm coming off an injury. Game starts at halftime. I got 13 points, so I'm feeling good. Remember what I've always said, never been a score. So 13 points a half for me, that's a lot. Third quarter comes around, you know, I'm ready for it. I'm pumped. Like I said, I done scored a pretty good amount in the first half, so I'm ready for the second half. I can literally see this in my head. Sprayberry's coming down. They try to pass the ball to one of my old Kel teammates, Marshall, who actually ended up transferring to Sprayberry. I step in front of the pass, I steal it, I throw it ahead to one of my guards and I take a step with my right foot afterwards, pop. In the moment, I heard the pop, but I'm like, there's no way that just happened again. I keep running, I get the drop off, I get fouled, right? I get fouled, keep in mind my adrenaline is running. I'm walking to the free throw line and I'm trying to walk, it hits me like, you just broke it again. And I mean, when I say again, I mean same spot, same everything. So I'm walking to the free throw line limping. And honestly, like I start crying as I'm walking to the free throw line. I shoot my free throws. I actually make them. I go to the bench and I'm bawling my eyes out. I'm bawling my eyes out. My head coach actually tells me to go to the training room because I'm crying like bad. Because at this point, I think my career is over with. I'm like, bro, you just broke it twice in the same year. Like it's kind of... It's kind of crazy to talk about now. Like I broke it like within six months, twice, twice, broke the same foot within six months, twice, twice. So I'm just sitting there, I'm crying. You go to a different orthopedist and this is what I want you guys to take note of when I'm talking about the differences between these two doctors, right? The first one, I said he had a track record with athletes, but I didn't think about the level of athletes. The first one was not used to working with elite level college athletes. He wasn't used to that. So in his head, he isn't thinking longevity any of that, right? He's used to working with, you know, middle school, you know, high schoolers who might not, you know, they're not trying to play in college. The second doctor I went to had specifically worked with D1 athletes, college athletes in general, and pros. So he understood when I walked into there, he should have gotten that surgery the first time, especially knowing that he was going to gain weight after the surgery. Like I said, I went from 230 something to 250. That's all that extra weight. I ended up getting a the surgery. They did put a screw in my foot that's still in there to this day. I haven't had any other problems with it. You know, for that rest of my senior year, though, I'm riding around on a scooter. Like I had my foot in the cast. I got one leg up and I'm just kicking with the other leg. They actually let me out of my classes five minutes earlier. So I'm zooming through the hallways. I did actually end up making it back for the last game of my senior year. It was a first round playoff game. But by that point, like I said, I broke my foot twice. I'm still trying to get back in shape. I haven't played live in X amount of games. So I was rusty, didn't play that well. We did end up losing. So that was the last game I ever played in high school. After that, of course, I'm still trying to get back in shape because I had to show up on campus at Florida Gulf Coast in June. Make sure you go check out that transition video that's also on the channel. All in all, what I want you guys to take from this story, from this series, is perseverance and patience, right? I had to be patient when, after I had already played on the circuit for a year, year and a half, I had to wait till, you know, April going into my senior year to get my first scholarship. I had to wait. I broke my foot twice within the same calendar year. If that isn't the perfect example of not only perseverance, but patience as well, trying to be patient, trying to get back on the court, right? Even after I broke it the second time, just persevering through that and having the mindset that we're not going to let those injuries stop you. We're not going to let any of that stop you. You're going to go to college and do what you're supposed to do. And all of this, this entire story, everything that I've said has led to this point today. And I can come to you with these stories. So I appreciate every single second of this entire journey that I've had. Like, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications. I appreciate you guys watching. Remember, if you want the one-on-one -on -one evaluations or the breakdowns that go on the channel, hit my website in the description. Also, remember, if you have any questions or you need any advice, press the link in my description for Noodle as well. Like I always say, I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you guys next time for the next video.